guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com. So I've gotten some files that have allowed us to get a lot deeper into the Windows Phone 7 series emulator than we were able to get before. So we're going to have a series of videos here that cover a variety of aspects of Windows Phone 7 series. To start, we're going to talk about some of the PIM applications like Outlook and the calendar. Then we're going to dig into the settings. We're going to talk about the multimedia and also go through Office Mobile because on this emulator there are versions of Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and OneNote that we haven't really seen before in depth. So let's get started. Here we have just the basic unlock screen. It says uh, film pocketnow.com videos here because that is my next calendar appointment. So you get a little bit of information here. We can slide up to unlock and I added a password here just to show you that you can do that. Um, one, two, three, four, quite simply. And now we are on our start screen, which is of course very customizable. And we talked about this in a previous video. So if you want to move something around, you simply tap and hold it, and then you can move it around or press the broken heart if you don't want it anymore. Uh, furthermore, you can tap and hold anywhere in the background on the start screen and be able to rearrange really anything. Okay, so let's go through some of these things. I set up my Microsoft Exchange account on this emulator, but it doesn't work. And I think that will go for other email accounts as well. So I'm going to go into my email just to show you the email application a little bit more than we've seen it before. So to start, we have this pivot list at the top. We can filter by urgent or unread or, or all unread. I'm really looking forward to being able to quickly filter by my unread messages only so I can get everything out of the way that I've seen before. So we have a few buttons along the bottom that we can play around with. We have plus to add a new message. We have the folder to look at our folders and synchronize. But if I try to sync my mail, you can see at the top, it's through that sort of pop down notification, the toaster notification, it says it cannot connect. So we're not going to try that again. So I'm going to press the plus button here to make a new email. I'm going to, e going to email myself. Of course, it won't work because it's not set up properly. Put a subject and say, hey. And then we can type, hey, this is a test. Now, there's a few things we can do within an email. Uh, we can send it down here. We can add an attachment. And take a look at this. Microsoft is working on a new attachment manager, which should make it easier to add attachments. It's being a little bit slow right now, but hopefully it'll come up in a second. Let me go back. OK, let me try that again. So anyway, it doesn't look like the attachment picker is working, but what you get is a little dialog box that says attachment picker coming soon. So presumably Microsoft is working on a really easy way to add attachments. We can go down to the application bar and hit these three buttons to get some more options. So we can show a carbon copy and blind carbon copy quite simply and easily. And we can also change the priority um, of a message to make it urgent or normal. And again, some of these things don't work all of the time. This is an emulator. You saw it sort of pop up for a second. I'm going to discard this message. And it's going to want to save it as draft, although, again, a lot of this isn't working right now. We can go to our folder list and see sort of that we have one draft waiting, which is the, the email message that we just started. And we can go back to the inbox. Very nice way to look at your email. Uh, let's take a look at the other settings we have here. So we can go to settings for this email. And you can see that it is using, um, it, it's using my email account on my Exchange server. So if I click server and sync settings, it'll show me all of my settings, although, uh, again, it doesn't work. From here, we can change our email signature. And by default, it says sent from my Windows phone. Presumably, there are going to be more settings here, hopefully, um, once this application gets finished. So that was a quick look at the, the email application. Uh, we can also add a new email account from here. And here's a look at really what Microsoft is working with out of the gate uh, for email. So we can do Facebook, Yahoo, other POP3 accounts, and Windows Live, which includes uh, you know Xbox Live, Messenger, and Hotmail. So let's go back to the start screen and take a look at some other applications. Let's go into messaging. This is actually your text messaging application. And obviously, we can't send a text message uh, to a real person, but we can sort of pretend. So if I press the plus button down here, um, I can say, I can type in a, a phone number. Or I can just press the plus button here, which should query into my address book, although it doesn't seem to be working right now. And I could say, you know, hey, and press the send button down here, or I can attach a picture. And we get this very simple, nice looking, sort of bubbly like text message. Um, and ch take a look at this. This is a pop-up notification that is a little bit interruptive, a little bit too much for my taste. And so you have a calendar reminder um, that you can either snooze or dismiss. 
I put something in the calendar earlier before I made this video and that's why it's doing that. So I'm gonna hit dismiss and we can clear the message from here. Now the back button works really strangely and we're gonna talk more about that in a future video. Sometimes it goes back to a previous screen, sometimes it jumps back to a previous application. So something to get used to. Um, and here we can actually go into text message settings and it says SMS center number, um, delivery confirmation on or off. So very simple stuff. Let's go back to the start screen and talk about the calendar before wrapping up this video, before we, we uh, jump into another one. So let's go into the calendar and I'm gonna make a new appointment at uh, 11 a.m. And you can see the out outlook, and you can see sort of the layout of this is very simplistic. So we can say, um, film another video. We can scroll down account so you can switch between uh, my Microsoft Exchange account and the device store, meaning the actual data on the device. What this will allow you to do is select which calendar this is going to. Um, the calendar on Windows Phone 7 series is very good at managing multiple uh, multiple calendars. So we can scroll down, we can click on more details in orange there, and we can change the reminder. We can change if we're busy, add some notes. I'm gonna click done because I wanna show you something. We'll go back to the start screen and now, in the little calendar tile, we say we see um, it's been updated to show me my next appointment. So very, very handy there. Let's quickly jump back into the calendar to show you the other settings. So we can go into the different views by swiping to the right up here. We can go into agenda view or day view, and then we can jump into the sort of zoomed out, nice looking, uh, the month view. And I think you can swipe to the right to go to the next month, let's see. Whoops, moved it off the screen there. Doesn't look like that is working. Um, so let's go to the back button, and we can click on here to manage calendars, where we can set the color for different types of calendars. So if you have a Facebook calendar, an exchange calendar, and a calendar right on your device, you can specify a color for all of these things so you don't get them mixed up. So that was a look at some of the PIM functions on Windows Phone 7 series. We've got a lot more coverage coming up, a lot more video walkthroughs of this new image that we have running in our emulator. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pocketnowvideo to find out when the next one hits. That's it for now.